Hello, I'm Sasha Epskamp, and this is Adele Isvaranu. And together we are organizing the Psychological Networks Amsterdam Summer School 2018. Because this is a special edition of the summer school, we've decided to not include the introduction to R in the program itself, but rather to videotape this lecture, so you can prepare for the summer school uh, before coming to Amsterdam and already learn about R. You need to learn R because we, all our analysis are implemented in R. And also because R is a very powerful statistical programming language that allows you to do a lot of things that we simply cannot do in any other software. So R is a statistical programming language. It allows us to do a lot in data visualization, data mining, but we can also uh, do general programming in R. I'm not going to teach about general programming in this series of lecture because we don't need it for the summer school. But it is a very flexible programming language and we can do a lot with it. And R is uh, open source. I think this is the main uh, benefit of R. It's free as in free beer, so we don't have to pay for it. But it's also free as in free speech, so we're freely uh, allowed to use R. And the nice thing about it is that it has a very large and active community around R. And there are many contributed packages. Um, so there are many extensions to R. I think there are over 10,000 contributed packages now, uh, including the ones that we'll use in this course. So to install R, you need to install two different programs. Uh, you have to install R. You can follow this link to do that. This will give you a program called R or RGUI, depending on if you use Windows or Mac. And we will actually never use that program. R itself looks like this. If you have the terminal, we can run a terminal program, and then we can send commands to that, and then it will give us feedback. Any uh, other program that we use to run R, we call it GUI, or Graphical User Interface. And the one that we will use is called RStudio. And RStudio looks like this. It's much better than the one that comes by default uh, with R. So that's why we always like to use RStudio instead of the default one. There are other ones you can look up online, uh, which ones there are and which ones you can use. Um, if you are very good at programming, you might want to consider uh, terminal-based programs such as Emacs. But in general, I think RStudio is really good and it's very easy to use. So I would just advise to start with that. Now, if we start RStudio for the first time, then uh, we can see four different panels uh, in which you can work. One thing that you might want to see in the rest of the slides is anything that follows a hashtag symbol is treated as a comment and we will not use. I'll come back to that later. So RStudio looks like this. It has three panels now, but we'll create a fourth one by going to new file, R script. And then we have a fourth panel in which you can work. Now this might not be the way RStudio looks for you right now. I, I like to change it a bit. Um, one thing I like to do is go to tools, global options, pane layout, and then set it like this. I set the console to the top left, the source to the top right. The reason for this is that on a laptop or on a widescreen uh, monitor, you have little vertical space, but a lot of horizontal space. These two are the most important ones, so you don't want to compete for vertical space in these panels. Another thing you see that we did different here is we set the appearance different. I use a black background with white letters because it's better for my eyes, um, but that's really a stylistic choice that uh, you can set any way you like. So this is just to um, rehash how to set the console and the source. There's a link to these slides available in the comments below uh, or in the text below on the YouTube. So this might be how our studio looks for you uh, using the default layout. And our studio consists of four panels. We have a console panel, a source panel, a panel for the plots and the help pages, and something we will call a workspace. The console panel, you might have already recognized, is the exact same thing that we had in the terminal. This is actually R. This is where we can enter commands, I can say 1 plus 1, and R gives us something back. R says that is 2. Many mathematical commands work 
So 2 times 10 divided by 2 equals 10. And anything that follows a hashtag is not used. So if I write 1 plus 1 hashtag plus 1, I will get 2 because the hashtag plus 1 here is treated as a comment, so it's not actually executed. This is useful if you want to say, here I am summing 1 and 1. So this is R, but we will actually not use this panel. We will use the source panel here. And I advise you to never actually type anything in the console like I did here now. The reason for that is that we want to be able to save our commands. So in the console, I can type things like one plus one um, and I get the, the answer. Another thing I can do is I can press up and go to my previous commands. That might be useful if you use the console, but um, if you don't use console, which I don't advise you to do, that's not really something you need. Now I uh, compiled these sheets in a certain way. I used the knit RR package to do so. And it will, um, uh, it allows me to type in codes in the sheets and then it will automatically tell me what uh, R will give. It does so in a very uh, uh, nice way. Here is a, a part of thing I can copy paste. And then it will give me the response that R gives as a comment. So with the hashtags. So this in R Studio will look like this in the sheets. Comments, I already showed you, everything that is follow, following a hashtag is not executed and is not used. You want to write as many comments as possible so that you, but also others that read your codes, know what you're doing when you read it back uh, or when you share your codes. All right, so uh, instead of in the console panel, we will actually work in the source panel. The source panel is simply a text editor. A plain text editor. It has some highlighting specific to R uh, syntax, but it's really just the same as a, a normal plain text editor. A plain text editor is not like Word. That's a rich text editor where you can set like font sizes and the fonts and headers and figures and stuff like that. A plain text editor literally only allows for text. So one plus one or um, symbols like this, numbers symbols, but not uh, any markup or fonts. Every programming language uses these plain text editors. So you need one to write um, codes, and um, that's why we use that. If I make a script, I can go to File, Save As, and then save my script using the ex extension .r. I use the extension .r here. By doing so, I now save my codes on a, or my file on a computer somewhere so that I can later open it again and look at it again. That's the main reason why you use R scripts all the time, so that you can save your codes and use them again later on. So this just shows that you can make a new file, an R script, and save it. You want to type all your commands in the R script. So you never want to type commands in the console, you want to type them in the R script. Now one thing we can do then, is we can select the commands, and then press run, or you press command enter, or I think it's control enter on Windows. Uh, to execute your commands. So to show this, I have 1 plus 1 here. I can select it. And I press Control Enter. Or I press the Run button. What it does, basically it copies your commands. And pastes them in the R console. And then press Enter. This allows me also to execute multiple commands in a row. So I can like write three commands, I save my file, you always want to do that as much as possible. I select the entire file, I press Ctrl Enter, 
and now all my commands were sent to the console. This way, I can execute all my commands and I can also make changes here whenever I want and then execute the new commands. You can also include comments in the script. So I can write a comment here, here I sum 4 and 4, and here another comment. And if I now send this all to the R console, then uh, you see that these comments are not executed. So this is a great way to keep track of what you're doing in an R script. And I sometimes write a comment for every single line of R code that I write, explaining what I'm doing. All right, that's it for part one. In part two, we'll start using objects and saving our commands.